But in case you think those are just my views, let's get in a couple of strategic thinkers also to weigh in with their perspective. I'm, uh, Michael Kugelman is about to join us in a couple of minutes, but let me start with Brahma Chalani, one of the top strategic thinkers uh, here in India. Um, Brahma, thank you so much for joining us. Now, you know, when you look at this entire situation with Canada, in particular the Vienna Convention and Canada saying that India is violating the Vienna Convention in some way, as I was just saying, the Vienna Convention says you've got to take care of the security of diplomats. And if that's not being done in countries like Canada or the UK or anywhere else, then there's something fundamentally wrong somewhere. Well, there is something very strange happening, which is that those that are citing international law seem to believe that harboring terrorists or militants that are glorifying violence is okay, but a country, a receiving country, does not have the right to impose reasonable limits within the definition of the Vienna Convention on Diplomatic Relations on the other side's posting of diplomats. The fact is that international law very much gives a carte blanche to the receiving side to put reasonable limits on the number of diplomats it is willing to host from the sending side. But I think at the root of this India-Canada diplomatic spat is the fact that Canada has emerged as the global hub of the Khalistan movement. The irony is that the Khalistan movement has few backers in India, including in Punjab. The Khalistan movement, though, is alive and kicking largely in the Anglosphere, principally Canada, the UK, and the US, and to a smaller extent, Australia and New Zealand. These five English-speaking countries host the most prominent Khalistanis. But Brahma, I've been talking to many international analysts in recent weeks and they're all somewhat surprised as to why India is taking such a hard line on this particular subject. And as I was just saying right now, may well have to do with the fact that terror is a red line for India. And uh, the entire question of Khalistani terror and safe havens given to Khalistani extremists in countries like Canada has been an irritant for India for a long time. And that's why India is taking such a hard line. Would you, would you agree with that view? Vikram, this diplomatic spat between India and Canada has reopened old wounds. Those wounds go back to the 1980s when Canada-based Khalistani terrorists bombed an Air India flight, killing all 329 people on board. This was one of the worst acts of terrorism in history. The problem is this, history is repeating itself. In the 1980s, Canada's shielding of dangerous Sikh militants led to the twin bombings that targeted two separate Air India flights. One bombing misfired and killed two baggage handlers in Narita, but the other bombing from Canada resulted in all 329 people on board being killed. India let Canada off the hook over those bombings. Even, those, those, even though those bombings were caused by people that India had conveyed to Canada as, as being dangerous militants. In fact, India had requested Trudeau's father, then Prime Minister Pierre Trudeau, to extradite one Talvinder Paramar, the chief of the Babar Khalsa, who, according to two separate Canadian inquiries, went on to become the mastermind of the main Air India bombing. And now, today, we are seeing Canada becoming the international epicenter of the Khalistan movement. And Talvinder Parmar, the same mastermind of the, of the Air India bombing, is the big hero of the Canada-based Khalistanis. 
Rama, I wanted to ask you, you know, whatever Canada is doing, okay, you could say that Justin Trudeau has a certain political constituency, he's playing to that, his, you know, his, his ally there, maybe he's playing along with that. Um, are you somewhat surprised that the US and the UK and even countries like New Zealand now all seem to be coming forward and making uh, public statements, seeming to back Canada in quite a strong manner? Why do you think that's happening? For two reasons. One, these five Anglosphere states always band together in any situation. And they issue statements in each other's support, even when the supporting country lacks its own independent evidence to make any kind of an assertion. The second reason being is that as members of the Five Eyes Intelligence community, these Anglophile states supply intelligence to each other. And Canada's allegation against India draws on intelligence supplied by the Americans. Now, this is something that the Americans don't want to say in public because they want to shield their relationship with India, which is quite important in the Asian context. But the fact is that American intelligence shared with Canada emboldened the Trudeau government to level an allegation against India that Trudeau himself has acknowledged in his own statement, the original statement that he made on the floor of House of Commons is nothing more than an allegation that too about potential, not actual link of the Indian government to a killing.